So basically, episode 14. Now, today we have a submission by Bogdan. He has sent in what he calls the dual base reflex enclosure. Now, I've been corrected on live stream when I showed this a couple of days ago. This is not, in fact, a dual base reflex. It is a series base reflex because we don't have two ports porting to the outside world, possibly a bit similar to like the ABC box. We only have one and the two ported boxes are in series with each other, a bit like a sixth, but obviously it's not because the drive. Anyway, the way that this enclosure is supposed to work is at higher frequencies the driver sees just this first chamber and this port loads at higher frequencies and the output from this port is channeled through past this second chamber which is not supposed to really change the sound at all it just kind of roots its way out of here at higher frequencies but then at the lower frequencies this port unloads therefore just giving a, a clear pathway for the uh, enclosure to see the rest of the box whereby this second port loads at a lower frequency because now we've got this whole box that the driver is seeing the whole volume rather than just this first chamber because that port is now unloaded so we've got higher frequency frequencies generated by this port and low frequencies generated by this port with the full volume being used. Obviously the idea of this is that we get two uh, frequencies that are Helmholtz loaded, therefore two frequencies that are boosted and they're nice and efficient. These boxes are supposed to have a pretty loud output or of course a wide range at the expense of some delay, but we'll see how that goes. Now Bogdan did say that he uses this box style in his own vehicle to great success with a single six and a half doing a 142 dBs at 30 hertz that is absolutely insane i can't get my head around how ridiculous that is at 30 hertz a 142 from a single six and a half inch woofer now looking at the picture the box is pretty big so i imagine you could technically squeeze a couple of 12s in that same volume space and get a similar score but uh it's very impressive still from a six and a half inch albeit not necessarily the most efficient use of space anyway i'm curious to see what this looks like on the days and dats v3 via an impedance sweep let's have a look Oh, this sounded pretty loud on the impedance sweep just then, even given the small amount of signal from the DATS. Now that is a pretty cool looking impedance sweep, and that's exactly what I'd expect to see. So let's go through this then. The first peak obviously is just the big unload as we always get, 79 hertz, way under the frequencies we're going to be testing, so that is cool. Now the first frequency that we test is a 150, which is just after the first impedance value, so that is pretty much almost bang on the uh, tuning frequency of this lower this bigger lower port at the end here so that's crazy we're gonna be loaded right down there at 150. Um, now playing bang on tuning isn't necessarily always the loudest playing a little bit above tuning can usually be a bit louder because then you've got displacement in phase from the cone and also the port working together whereas at tuning the driver is held so still that you don't actually really get any air displacement from it at all the port actually seems to be tuned down at 144 so yeah very similar to the 150 that we're going to be playing as our lowest frequency now if we go up the next frequency we play is a 198 but just before we get there we have our second impedance spike so this is the impedance spike between the two Helmholtz modes of this enclosure up at 184 hertz. So that's probably going to be an air spring formed by the entire volume rather than just the first chamber. That's the, the, the main big whole thing uh, forming an air spring at 184, I would imagine. But a 198 sits just about a third of the way down there on its way to the second valley. So, okay, we're going to get a bit of excursion there at the 33 scaled hertz, but that should be fine. The next frequency we play is a 270 and whoa, ding, 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 that's pretty much dead on the next impedance value. So that impedance dip there, the second one, one is going to be the Helmholtz mode of that first chamber. So that's that first port after the driver that's going to be loading the cone up at that higher frequency at 272. So yeah, we've got two frequencies that are pretty loaded <laughs> on this thing, which is pretty crazy. After that, we rise sharply to what is probably the air spring of the first chamber here, which is up at about 300 hertz. The last frequency we play, which is a 360, is all the way up here 
right down at the bottom of that third impedance spike. So that's not at any kind of port loading mode. That's not at any air spring. So I think that that frequency is probably going to be quite weak. It's going to take quite a lot of power to play that 360 hertz or that 60 scale hertz. And it's probably not going to be very loud. But that's just my skepticism. We'll see how it performs in real life. But I want to see what does this sound like to the ear. So let's whack it on the table and have a quick listen to it. So what does a 150 sound like? Let's play the 25 scale hertz first. This should be loaded off of the big port. Oh my god, guys, the cone, no movement, no, no visible movement at all. So much air displacement out of this port. In terms of how it sounds, it's actually very clean because the cone is loaded. As we've discussed in previous episodes, the driver's excursion is what adds distortion to the sound. So because this is so loaded and the cone's barely moving, the waveform is actually pretty clean sounding apart from the chuffing we've got from the port. But that just could be because this is 3D printed and you wouldn't get so much chuffing in real life, I imagine. All right, next up, this is 198. So this is gonna be a bit more excursion, I think. Yeah, more excursion. It still sounds okay though. Yeah, quite a lot of excursion, but it does sound all right. It's not as clean as that lower one, but it sounds okay. And still loads of port displacement. Yeah, loads of displacement out of the port. That's gonna be pretty loud as well, I think. And next to 270, this one was loaded by the internal port. So this should be pretty dead still as well. Yeah, not much excursion. The cone is pushing itself outwards, as it seems to do a lot anyway on this driver for some reason, but there's not actually much oscillation of the cone. Loads of port displacement again. We've, it's, it's constantly loads of air coming out of the port there at all of these frequencies so far. Now this highest frequency I didn't think was gonna be particularly loud. Oh no, that's not gonna be very good. That doesn't sound potent at all. No, that's awful. That's almost the box is just kind of eating that up. That there's barely any output up there, and uh, that scales to 60 hertz. So this exact arrangement wouldn't play up to 60 very nicely at all. But the lower stuff, it sounds to be pretty good on. I think that top frequency is really going to hurt this box's average. But I think the lows are going to be pretty crazy. So on the RTA then, this lower frequency starts off looking perfectly clean and it continues looking beautiful. This is the first time we've ever seen this 150 hertz, 25 scaled look beautiful. The all the way up to 15 watts that was didn't even deform once. Wild, absolutely crazy clean at the lower frequency. And we get the fundamental standing beautifully proud on its own, only with some harmonics coming when the fundamental is way off over the screen. So it's super, super clean at this low frequency. The 33, we do get more excursion here because we're not as loaded. And as you can see, it does start to deform as the woofer reaches its mechanical limits, which is as expected. It's still not too bad though. It's way better than some of the other boxes we have seen, but yeah, it is deforming a fair bit. And that's mostly down to this driver's poor X Max. We still got the fundamental proud here, but there are quite a lot more harmonics coming in as we reach the woofer's excursion, as you can see here. The 270, which is another loaded frequency, looks beautiful again, it's very similar to the to the 150 um all the way up to 15 watts yeah looks fine no visible kind of deformation and it's very equal top and bottom of the sign as well a super strong fundamental with the second harmonic only creeping in as we get really loud and the third is barely anywhere to be seen with the fourth just being like yo and the 360, not quite as loud, not quite as symmetrical top bottom of the sine wave, but it doesn't deform horrendously. So it's gonna sound fine. The fundamental is still kind of on its own and the second harmonic does come up at a fair height, but only really once we get up to a high level. So yeah, really clean across the board this, this box. I gotta say, it is looking relatively promising for this little guy. So let's whack it in the test chamber, have a listen to some bass demos and see how well it moves that bit of toilet paper on the doorway, see how much flex we get on the camera, as that is a pretty good indication as to how loud it's gonna end up on the meter.
did definitely look pretty loud. It was moving a bunch of air in the open doorway there, but the meter will tell us the truth about how loud this is and whether it can do a range of frequencies. I've actually moved the box to the back here with the woofer firing backwards. The port is firing sideways uh, to the side of the cabin and it's not pushed right up against the back because I found that doing that really hindered the 360 like super bad. Moving it just a tiny little bit away from the back did help with the uh, 360 just by ear. Um, so let's see what does it do on the 25 scale hertz being a 150. Let's hit it and see what score we do. Not bad, a 142.6. Not the loudest we've had by any means, but pretty solid. Not too bad at all. Now it's a 198, which is 33 scaled hertz. Oh, oh, louder at the 33 scale. Interesting. So that is in between both tuning frequencies. And that's what I was saying a little bit earlier about playing a little bit above tuning can actually be louder than playing tuning just because you've got the displacement left from the port being a bit loaded, but also the driver as well. Whereas at tuning, the driver is held very still. So you'd only get the displacement at the port. So yeah, pretty awesome. 144.8. Next up is our 45 scaled hertz. Let's see what that's doing. So quite a bit lower, a 132.2, and that is actually at one of the port modes. And the positioning is so fussy because this is an extreme class cabin, literally by maybe moving the box a little bit further back or a little bit further forward or twisting it by like a little bit could give us another 8 dB it's just because there are so many reflections in this cabin compared to a real life one. So yeah, we just kind of have to go with the best on average, I guess. And lastly, our 60 scaled Hertz 360. Not as bad as I thought, to be honest, a 128.5. Cool, let's close the door off. I'm not gonna move the position of the box. We might benefit from a slight different position with the door off, but it's just too many variables and too much like messing around. Um, so I'm just gonna close the door off, keep the box in the same position and see what it's doing. A 136.6, not too bad actually. 136.1, almost exactly the same. That's pretty cool. 137.2. 137.3. Oh, 117.1, it drops heavily, doesn't it? So where does that put our little series boy on the leaderboard then? Well, with the door open category, we slot comfortably in with a 137.03 above the Justin T-Line and just a little bit below the half wicked one. So pretty solid performance. However, with the door closed, we actually go straight into bust category with a 129.25. The T-Line, the parallel pandemonium actually being better than that with the door closed. And shuffling down with the door open, we throw the parallel pandemonium into bust stage status there. Looking at this overall with the door closed, you can see that it's actually only a little above the base barrel, which was a very tiny little enclosure. And I think that smaller enclosures actually benefit from the door sealed off test because they take up less space in the cabin. And I think that it's easier to get louder with more cabin volume available with the door closed, getting rid of that Helmholtz mode. And the larger enclosures don't seem to play as well, given their relative performance with the door closed. How would the door open, given that Helmholtz mode and space to breathe and stuff they're obviously much louder in the door open category it's performing pretty similar to other big boxes of its size it is quite a large box you know you've got the justin t line the parallel pandemonium just below it and the half wicked one is a couple of dbs above it so the half wicked one's still freaking loud but um yeah it is getting up there but db scores aside i am super impressed with how this sounds it's super clean on the scope and on the RTA. It will be lovely to listen to and it's loud. And this benefits these kind of drivers that have low mechanical excursion on X-Max, but have a hard pushing force, have a strong pushing and lifting force against port loads. And that's what this box is doing. It's loading the cone at a few different frequencies there and making use of the strength that the motor has while not really introducing the distortions that come from mechanical excursion so this will actually be a great box for older drivers or more budget end drivers that do have limited excursion or even pa drivers if you wanted to get a really efficient system going on that's loud and that you don't run into mechanical excursion limits too soon this would be a great box design whereas if you've got a woofer that moves a lot more and it has a lot of mechanical excursion 
uh, maybe another box design would actually perform better something something where you can make use of that extra excursion that the driver has and to be honest that might be why Bogdan's box is performing so well in his car because I think that's probably a very big box for a six and a half inch driver and it is loading the cone nicely which is important for six and a half because there's not much cone area there's not actually much load that you can apply to the cone without doing something clever like this with multiple ports or some kind of horn or something like that if small drivers are very difficult to load and they typically have very high motor force for their given cone areas so that's probably why his design is so loud in his car and I believe it probably does to a 142. So you guys I hope you enjoyed this one if you want to submit a design for this series there is a video link in the description that details all the information you need to know driver TS parameters box specification maximum sizes etc send a design in get it seen on boom or bust and maybe you can top the uh, tuba HT now which is on the leaderboard for door open at least anyway if you want to sponsor this series with a sticker or a message or segment in these episodes then there's an email in the description as well get in touch but until then guys i will see you next time it's probably gonna be our uh, next week at the weekend because i'm hecking busy at the moment there's so many repairs coming in so i'm trying to bang these out as quick as possible but two a week is a little bit much at the minute but i'll try and bang them out as much as i can see you next time have a great week